نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I welcome all the viewers of Peace TV for this unique series of interviews wherein we are discussing a topic which is very close to the hearts of the believers and that is the virtues of the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah and to discuss about the virtues we have with us in the studios today our dear Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad from UK Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad is popular and a well-known face on Peace TV as well as he's the founder of the website www.islam21c.com Sheikh Alhamdulillah we have been discussing about the ahadith that which talk about the virtues of the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah we discussed one but I know for sure that there are many more ahadith that which talk yeah. about its virtues that is true Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa wa sahbihi ajma'in we mentioned the narration of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said the best 10 days are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah or the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. One time Ibn Umar said that we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we were discussing good deeds. See the Sahaba when they discuss with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or when they sit with themselves they are not worried about the best camels at that time or they are not worried that much about the dunya or in today's time the best 10 mercedes car yeah. the bmws yes the best 10 cars anyway the children now are worried about the best 10 cars you know allah this is subhanallah the culture it became the culture allah musta'an anyway so they were discussing the good deeds so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam either entered or he was with them he said ma min amalin salih afdal عند الله منه في هذه الأيام. so here the focus is the amal in this ten days. it is similar anyway. the Arabic, so the Arab speaking people might differentiate between this, the narration of Ibn Umar and the narration of Ibn Abbas. the narration of Ibn Abbas, the hadith of Ibn Abbas is in Sahih al Bukhari. okay. this hadith, hadith Ibn Umar, is in Musnad al Imam Ahmad and most of the scholars graded that hadith as Sahih. ما شاء الله. The Prophet Sallallahu said there are no deeds that are better than the deeds to be performed on those 10 days of the Hijjah. They were surprised. They were surprised. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said as a continuation of the Hadith فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ Increase or do plenty of تَهْلِيل which is saying لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. or saying لا إله إلا الله. Okay. the full صيغة is the full one. as we said لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. and then تكبير الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر. and then تحميد الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله. these three statements were mentioned in this hadith. some people by mistake they add تسبيح. Okay. No, the hadith did not mention tasbih. However, some scholars said that tasbih is part of it, which is saying subhanallah. Subhanallah. Or, as the scholar said, that the Prophet wasallam was referring to dhikr in general. So you make was any type of dhikr? Any type of dhikr. And in particular, if we want to go with the statement of the Prophet wasallam. Yes, then we go for tahleel, takbir, and tahmeed. And obviously, the tasbih is one of the most virtuous types of dhikr. Subhanallah. Okay? Now, the tahleel, as we said, is saying, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. This is the full form. The tahmeed or the takbir saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And in general, the takbir, the takbir, 
is one of the most virtuous acts to be said in occasions. That's why, inshallah, we will discuss in Eid that one of the most recommended dhikr during Eid is takbir. The takbir is one of the acts that are normally recommended when there is a gathering of Muslims. And that's why in Eid, we say a lot it of is takbir. recommended to do a lot of takbir. Definitely. And Allah Jalla wa ala said even in the Eid of Al-Fitr. Eid Al-Fitr. Yeah. Allah Jalla wa ala said, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَى وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا Takbir. And Ibn Umar said that they used to do more takbir in Al-Fitr, in the Eid of Al-Fitr. So this is takbir. Now you know, unfortunately, they are in some countries, they want to refer to takbir as a sign of the jihadist. Yes, it has become the call for jihad it nowadays is, on the media. It becomes yeah, any, the call for jihad. Or when they hear Allahu Akbar, they think that, well... well someone is shooting someone. <laughs> yeah, <there> is, <laughs> someone is shooting someone. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Astaghfirullah. Maybe the brothers who are using it, okay, frequently in such places, maybe they need to put that in mind. That otherwise, it will be misunderstood, the takbir. In the adhan, we start the adhan with what? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The iqama, we start the iqama with Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Anyway, so this is the takbir. It was reported that Ibn Umar, who narrated this hadith, and Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they used to go to the market, to the marketplace, and they used to make a lot of takbir, loudly. So the people will be encouraged and then they will start doing takbir. And as one of the early scholars said, that the takbir was a habit of Muslims or was the habit of Muslims during those 10 days. And you would use, when 10 days enter or start, you would use or you would hear the takbir everywhere, in the streets, in the marketplace, etc. But in present day, age we do not see the muslims implementing on the sunnah unfortunately yes unfortunately yeah 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 that is true we need to revive this sunnah Inshallah. because allah Jalla wa ala likes his name to be glorified and in particular the takbir as we said and any kind of dhikr a friend of mine told me he was living in saudi arabia or he's living in saudi arabia until now he said his grandmother and his mother told him that her grandmother told her that in their town it was known that when people announced the start of the first 10 days of the hijjah the whole town start making takbir subhanallah and it is as if the whole town is creating this much noise mashallah of takbir sheikh sorry to interrupt but this gives rise to a question that should this takbir be done individually or should it be done in unison? Okay, in general, ibadah should be done individually. Dua should be done individually. If it was done in unison, then it can be overlooked, but it should not be the habit of people. It should not be the habit of people because the essence of this is what? The essence of this is ibadah, not the enjoyment of the rhythm. Okay. So it takes a tune. Yes, this is the problem. Even Talbiya in Hajj, you know. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك Then the person will be taken by the waves of sound and rhythm and chanting. The tune. The tune. No, this is an act of ibadah. We are not like the Christians or others where we sing and we enjoy the sing. <laughs> no, 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 we need to feel it in our hearts. We need to feel it in our what hearts. What we utter from the tongue has a meaning to it. Yes, yes, and this is glorifying Allah Jalla wa'ala. However, I don't want, because some brothers, when the issue of dhikr comes, they leave any discussion about the spirituality of the dhikr and they just focus on the sunnah in the dhikr is to make it individual, not to make it in unison, not to make gathering dhikr. And they make this as the biggest issue and people forget about the virtues of dhikr itself. 
We don't want to This is go the other into, extreme. Yes, we don't want to get into this. Let us focus on the virtues of the dhikr and we explain to people that is better to do the dhikr by yourself. This is more, inshallah, more virtuous. Okay, but when they used to go, Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar, they used to encourage people to do dhikr of Allah. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. There may be more a hadith talking about the virtues and more explanation required, but inshallah, we will go for a break now and we resume after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. Sheikh, we were discussing about the ahadith pertaining to the virtues of Zul Hijjah, and there may be plenty more to be discussed. So, could you please list them? Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. As Salaf al Salih, may Allah Jalla Ala be pleased with them, they recognized the importance of those 10 days. In fact, Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who used to serve the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had an amazing statement. He said that we understood that doing good deeds in one of those 10 days is like doing good deeds in 1,000 days. So each day of the first 10 days of the Hijjah is equal to what? 1,000 days. To 1,000 days. Subhanallah. A thousand days, yani we are talking about around three years. Approximately. Approximately. And he said, and Yawm Arafa is equal to 10,000 days. This is not something simple. That's why Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he used to do a lot of ibadah, a lot of ibadah that no one can even compete with him. Because it is an opportunity. It is a unique opportunity that no one should miss. We will be talking about fasting. Some of the scholars, al awzahi said that we also understood or balagana or we have heard that doing good deeds every day is like jihad. Yes, doing good deeds every day is like going for a battle. Not only any battle, whereby the person is fasting during the jihad and observing Qiyamul Layl. But our audiences may have this question, Shaykh, that how can the zikr of Allah be more superior to jihad, which is fighting in the cause of Allah to make the word of Allah the supreme? Yes, Allah yahdik ya brother Kaleem. Allah yahdi. Amen. This is a very important question. I was planning to talk about this in the coming episode. But as you ask this question, let me explain it because it is a serious question. You know, we have to understand that ibadat, acts of ibadah, are of two types. We just mentioned this briefly in one of the episodes. That's why I mentioned it in the beginning. There are what we call or what I call, there is the listed ibadat. Yes, the which are regulated ibadat. by the sharia. Heavily regulated by the Sharia, heavily, yeah, strictly regulated by the Sharia, and we need to follow them as they are. The non-listed ibadat are the rest of our life: eating, drinking, enjoying with our families, traveling, sleeping, and so on. Even playing with the children in the park. These are ibadat. Provided that we do them for the right cause, not just do them and then claim that they are an act of ibadah or they are acts of ibadah. No, with the intention, the with motivation, the right with the motivation was a motivation that Allah Jalla wa Ala will be happy with and pleased with. Inshallah. Now, we need to understand something very important. I would like my brothers and sisters to listen to this carefully. That in order to transfer all of our life to be ibadah, our connection with Allah Jalla wa'ala should be strong. The connection with Allah Jalla wa'ala should be strong. The connection between our heart with Allah Jalla wa'ala is open all the time. It's 24 hours. We communicate with our Lord all of the time. We think of our Lord all of the time. 
because he is the most beloved one to us. Alhamdulillah. As we always say, I know maybe the, the parable is not the best, but sometimes we need to give examples like this. For better understanding. For better understanding. And Ali ibn al Hussein gave a similar example when he was talking about knowing the words of Allah Jalla wa'ala, the importance of knowing the words of Allah Jalla wa'ala. He said, if a beloved person were to send you a message, you wouldn't be happy until you read it and understand it. Definitely. You wouldn't be just happy by reading. So he said, what about the Quran? We read it, we need to understand it. If we love Allah, if we need to know what Allah is telling us. Definitely. Similarly, we say that if, for example, a newly married person, or he, he has not been married, but he had his fiancée, and they are planning to get married, in a halal way, he will be thinking about her most of the time. A young person had a fiancé, and now she will be thinking about him, he will be thinking about her. His main worry is the marriage. His main worry is that day. His main worry is how he can please her. Whenever he goes to the market, he sees maybe clothes for women and he says, oh, let me buy this for my fiancé. Imagine she texted him and the text was not clear. Would he just be able to sleep overnight without understanding what she said to him? Maybe she said to him something rubbish. Maybe she told him that she doesn't want him anymore. But it was corrupted or he could not understand it. So he needs to understand it. This is out of what? The love that which he has. To yes, do. out of love. Now, subhanallah, do we treat Allah like this? Do we treat the kalam of Allah like this? Do we think about Allah like this? Do we think about Akhirah like this? This is a question. I'm, I'm putting it before myself. I'm putting it before my brothers and sisters. What is our main concern in this life? What I wanted to say, if... The main concern we have is Allah, the remembrance of Allah, the love of Allah, to please Allah. Then that will transfer our entire life to be ibadah. No one can say that his connection with Allah Jalla is weak, yet he is sleeps for the sake of Allah. No one can say that his salah is very weak, his dhikr of Allah is weak. His remembrance of Allah is weak, yet he eats for the sake of Allah. Sure. There so is he remains strong for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if the person has a strong connection with Allah, he thinks of Allah all the time. So when he wants to eat, he is also thinking about Allah Jalla and he's asking himself, you know why I am eating? I want to please him. Ya Allah, what do you want me to do? Ya Allah, why do you want me to eat? Ya Allah, I'm eating for you. So how I am eating for you? Ya Allah, you like people to fast, for example. And I know that if I don't eat a proper meal, I won't be able to fast. So I am eating because I want to fast so you will be pleased with me. So this act is an act of ibadah now because he's eating because he's what? He wants to be able to fast. Same thing when he breaks his fast. Allah likes people to break their fast early. And Allah likes people to break their fast on dates. So he is doing this in order to follow Muhammad وسلم, who is the closest person to Allah. And Allah Jalla wa ala likes this. So he will eat because of this. Not only that, he needs to buy food in order to fast and in order to provide food for his children to fast why because fasting is obligation and they will be pleasing allah jalla wa ala. allah jalla wa ala will look at them allah jalla wa ala will be happy that this family is fasting Definitely. so this person is taking his car or maybe taking public transportation to go somewhere to buy food for his family to fast so now his journey is what all this worship is an act of ibadah. While if he just go for no intention, it will not be an act of ibadah. Definitely. So the point is, the more your heart is connected with Allah, 
the more the rest of your activities, yes, the rest of your habitual activities will be what? Acts of ibadah. Inshallah. So that, that's why Allah Jalla wa'ala wants us to be connected with him directly in certain intervals in our life. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis. That's correct. And once we are recharging our connection with Allah, yes, then those points where we were connecting with Allah, they will serve like pillars in our life. And then the rest of the life will be carried by those pillars. So the rest of the life will be as well acts of ibadah because the rest of the life is also based on remembrance of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So that's why in certain times Allah Jalla wa'ala said, although, although other activities are beloved to me and I want you to do jihad, I want you to work, I want you to have some fun with your families, but in certain times, no, dedicate them for dhikr, for connection, for recharging your iman with me, for reconnecting with me so that's why in certain times like ramadan like the first 10 days of the hijjah leave other activities and focus on the listed ibadat leave the non-listed ibadat leave them out or postpone them and focus on what the listed ibadat such as the zikr, the zikr of allah jalla wa ala. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, I think this is clear to the audiences as well that making the zikr of Allah during the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah is more superior as we learned it from the Shaykh that there are certain ibadat which are listed and there are certain ibadat that which are not listed and not regulated heavily by the Sharia. Jazakallah khairin well, Shaykh. Yeah. Inshallah, there is more to it and there are more virtues to be learned, Inshallah, but due to lack of time, we conclude today's episode and we will promise you inshallah we will return with more episodes on the same topic until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh